but okay, so our next topic is uh, we're going to talk about these protests and these riots and what they're actually about because there's a lot of people discussing this shit and they're making the narrative all about this shit. Um, and I think a lot of it is missing the goddamn point. Um, so here's the thing with these protests and riots, right? Um, okay, um, I just saw that you guys could use that fucking crazy ass car alarm. Um, so here's the thing with these uh, protests and riots, right, is uh, in a lot of these instances, the violence that is that is instigated, incited, and started um, in a lot of cases comes from provocateurs and undercover cops uh, that, that have infiltrated these protests specifically to do that. I watched a bunch of videos from protesters on the ground, right? Uh, it's like citizen reporting. Because fucking CNN ain't going to talk about this shit. A lot of this, a lot of these people are like provocateurs. I watched a bunch of these videos, and I might have witnessed some of it yesterday as well when I was at the protest. I made a video about it earlier, um, but I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of a brief of what I suspect happened. I'm not making any bold yes or no definitive claims i'm saying this is what i suspect and this is th this should be investigated um so uh, there are undercover cops provocateurs all that sort of stuff that uh uh show up and there's videos of them where they uh they're the ones kind of using their crowbar and popping things off uh and uh and then they're throwing bricks into buildings and you know they're they're like huh how about these bricks? You guys want some of these, right? And they're and they're basically using the anger and the fervor that we have as protesters, as activists, and they're trying to manipulate it and turn it into violent rage. And the sad part is, it works. Some and in a lot of instances, it works, right? You end up with that herd mentality. I kind of saw that yesterday. There were there were two gentlemen on uh, motorcycles that tried to run through the crowd and stir everybody up um, and create a stampede. Um, the the person that started the the cop car fire in Pittsburgh was just this anarchist kid uh, that was like flipping off the rest of the protesters and he was spray painting an A and you know, setting shit on fire. And like, he wasn't really part, like, it didn't seem like he was part of this protest. He just kind of swooped himself in. The two black dudes that were on the bike were also like following the protesters, which seemed very, very odd. And they were egging them on. So basically like they wanted the protesters to turn violent. Um, uh, God damn it. This car alarm, you guys is, is, is so fucking obnoxious. Uh, I'm sorry that this is going off. Um, but uh, I'll try to keep talking so it browns it out. But, you know, they, they these these bikers were like following us around. Um, they didn't need to do that. And neither did the cops look at these bikers who were constantly following the the uh, uh, fucking uh, protest around. The cops didn't do shit because the cops want that to be there. They want they want these provocateurs to be there. So at the least, my my suspicion is that these two people on the motorbikes were uh, at the least provocateurs that were either encouraged or hired by the police. Um, at the worst, they were undercover cops that were sent in to stir the crowd up. And then on top of that, there were a bunch of empty uh, police cars, police cruisers that were um, uh, that were just left on the side of the street on the path of the protest, which is bizarre because it's like, what police car, police cruiser have you ever seen that is just kind of left on the side of the street without any cops around it or cops inside of it? Kind of seems a little weird, right? But I've also seen videos where it's like there's no construction going on, but there's a pile of cinder blocks and bricks right on the side of a street corner next to a bank. What's that all about? It's these weird little things that happen. And if and it, all of this is like, oh, Krish, conspiracy theories. You can't, the law enforcement wouldn't do that. Sure, they would kill innocent black people, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna infiltrate protests. Come on, these are the kind of semi-okay, maybe kind of murderers, but they're good 
murdered. They're good people that are that happen to be murderers. That's come on. This is all really. This is just the poor man's COINTELPRO. And if you're unfamiliar with what COINTELPRO is, it's what the FBI did to the Black Panthers when the Black Panthers started doing community initiatives like free breakfast and started teaching communities how to do that. Free breakfast, free healthcare, free ambulance ride, free health checkups. They were doing that in the 60s. And J. Edgar Hoover freaked the fuck out because, oh my God, communities were feeding the starving people in their own communities. And they were helping each other out. And he infiltrated them. And he started disorganizing them. And he incited violence. Fred Hampton was fucking murdered by the Chicago Police Department. Why? Because he was bridging the gap between the white, poor black community and the poor white community, the poor Asian community, and the poor brown community. He was bringing them all together. And the Chicago Police Department fucking murdered that guy. And... There is a um, there is evidence that says that Fred Hampton's murder wouldn't have happened had there not been somebody on the inside that was working with the police. So really, you're going to tell me that cops don't infiltrate it when we have a history of that shit? Oh, that's right. The history of that shit isn't taught to anybody, is it? Nobody talks about that end of the Black Panthers. We talks about the fact that COINTELPRO and, and, and this, this uh, infiltration of the Black Panthers by various different police departments and the FBI actually happened just by manipulating people's economic status, for one, and for two, happened specifically because they were succeeding at nonviolent protesting. They want to turn the nonviolent protests into violent protests to discount them. But no, let's make the narrative about, about violent protesters. It's, it's also a, not understanding that on day one of the protests, my understanding is that the cops in Minneapolis, um, it, they were the ones that instigated um, uh they were the ones that instigated and escalated the violence by throwing tear gas at peaceful protesters, tear gas, rubber bullets. And then we have evidence of that too. It's like India, Indianapolis that happened in apparently um, they were just firing rubber bullets and tear gas at protesters that didn't do anything. They were like, Oh, they broke a window. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're basically protesting uh, the over exaggerated measures that cops take to make it fucking more violent. Right to make it, they're they're like, hey, we're we're peacefully protesting. We got all these chants. We got all these signs. We want you to know that we're sick of violent cops. And what do the cops do? They get more fucking violent. They're spray painting. Get out the rubber bullets. Don't we criticize countries that have these um, outrageously outdated? legal systems that seem to be prone on violence. Don't we kind of make fun of those societies? So it's that's, it's a lot of bullshit in my opinion, where we come out and be like, Oh, we're Ron. They're, they're meanie pants with their, they, they're beheading people. They're all, they're killing. I mean, you, you steal a candy bar and they just set you on fire in the middle of the road. What did we just do? Counterfeit bill and it's fucking let's put their knee on somebody's neck and kill them. Spray painting. Let's tear gas that crowd. What's the difference? There isn't any. There fucking isn't any. Now there's a lot of folks. There's a lot of folks particularly from the moderate liberal camp uh, that are upset. Oh, they're mad. They're mad about these rioters, you guys. They're pissed. You know, they're like, oh, these bad apples. They're coming out here and they're, and, and they're, and they're setting the targets on fire and they're looting and they're burning down the auto zones. And, and boy, CNN, CNN got hurt. We, I, and they spray painted the, the CNNs and, and that's, and that's just unacceptable because I get a lot of lavender scented things from the targets. And, uh, I, I, I even, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a protester too, as a moderate liberal, I'm a protester too, because I went into the auto zone 
and I uh, I protested to get a lavender scented engine in there, and I did, and I and they and they did it, and they did it for me. They did it because I'm a protester. I'm a, a moderate liberal. Pro that's what I did, and and these mean pants are uh, they're burning that stuff. Yeah, you didn't say fucking dick all when Target was treating their fucking employees like trash. Where if they have to make their own masks, they barely get hazard pay. Their customers are getting aggressive. These fucking moderate liberals say not a goddamn thing when they when when these employees go on strike. Just whoop, zip silence. Nothing. Not a fucking thing, right? All of a sudden, some poor people finally get the things that they actually need to get, like diapers and milk and food, during a, during a fucking protest because the cops are lobbying fucking tear gas at them and shit, and they're like, fuck it. The cops are escalating. We'll push back and escalate. That's also part of the history of the Black Panthers. The cops would escalate, and then the Panthers would escalate. And then the cops would re-escalate. And the Panthers would have to push back. The Panthers didn't start violently. The violence started because the cops were killing black people. Same fucking issue. They stayed silent and they quoted fucking CNBC money reports. And they're like, here's the, look, the economy and the stocks. And you got to look at the Wall Street and look at the bottom line. Okay. Look, if you look at these reports, very smart. Where's my, I got all these accounts, so I got to, the bottom line, make all these fucking claims. They didn't say a goddamn thing about trillions of dollars being sent out to the corporations. When the corporations and Congress looted the American people, said not a goddamn thing. Somebody gets a bunch of fucking diapers that they need to help their kid during a pandemic when Congress isn't fucking helping out people. And they go, oh, this is ridiculous. This is not what protesting is about. You don't get it. You don't understand what this is about. You stayed silent. You stayed silent when people went on strike for better and basic human rights. You stayed fucking silent during that shit. And all of a sudden you want to, you want to voice up about, oh, the treatment of corporations. How are these protesters treating these corporations? Oh, my word. Where will I get my lavender scented things now? It's time to end these hypocrisies. It's time to end these fucking platitudes. Not a, and you know what else they don't do? There's not a fucking word on how these cops actually treat these protesters. Because the cops are killing. Like, there is footage of um, a protester named Luke that was hit and run over by a police cruiser in LA during a peaceful protest. They weren't getting violent. And what was the media spin on that? What did everybody get caught up? Oh, they threw a skateboard at the back windshield of, oh dear lordy, why would they? That is just so mean. So mean of them to, how dare they? I mean, these cops, they're sure they're murderers and killers, but they're good. They're good people that happen to be murderers and killers. They don't fucking say anything about these cops murdering protesters during a peaceful protest. There were two people, there was a fucking Mustang yesterday that drove through the Pittsburgh protests, injured two people. Where the fuck are these people talking about that? Why aren't the cops going after them? Why aren't these people coming out and saying something about that? Why aren't the cops coming out? Why, why aren't anybody coming out and saying, hey, you know, those fucking guys on motorcycles in, in Pittsburgh yesterday that was just antagonizing and following the protests? Why, why weren't the cops doing anything about that? Why aren't you showing that same level of outrage for that? You want to see what the cops actually do? Let's take a look at some stuff that the cops actually do. Because I have a couple of things that, that I found uh, over, on, over on the Twitters. And um, be patient because I have to switch a couple of screens and stuff around. But I hope you guys can hear this stuff. This is, uh, this is from uh, a Black Lives Matter protest yesterday, uh, May 30th, right there. Um, and, and this is what the cops, the NYPD is doing to these people. Watch this.
So here comes the second cruiser. And then they're trying to mow through these people. Look at that shit. That's crazy. That's what the police do to protesters. Here's something else that they're doing uh, to, to these guys as well. So give me a second. I got to switch over to the screens. This is the type of stuff that they're doing that um, nobody wants to really address. That uh, people, people just kind of ignore. And, and they make it all about, oh, look, at these protesters are getting pretty violent. Uh, here's, the, here's what happened in Louisville. Hey, this happened. These are cops right here, destroying everything. You're gonna take the materials of us trying to peacefully protest. This is what they do. Look at that. The cops are coming in and they're blockading these people. Even if they're not cops, even if they're not cops, those cops came in and they fucking blockaded people. Look at that. They're blockading these people from getting to their water. Here's what cops think of, of, of journalists, by the way. Uh, this is from Unicorn Riot. They shared this, uh, the, they shared this recently. And uh, let me see, I'm gonna make sure I find the right one here. This is from Unicorn Riot's tweet. Uh, let's listen. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. Did you just hear that? Can you say more? So if you didn't hear him, they said, if you come any closer, uh, you would get baked. And then they said, you are part of the problem, if not the entire problem. This is, this is fucking journalists that they're doing this to. Where's the outrage to all of this from these moderates, liberals? That I'm, that I'm not seeing it. All I'm seeing is a bunch of outrage for, oh boy, some of these bad apples. While we're on the bad apple argument, how come you know the, the bad apple argument is something that's it's okay to use for protesters as a valid excuse to demonize protesters, but when you say, oh, bad apples for cops, like, no, 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 you can't. That's, not, that's a false argument to make. The, it's just these bullshit double standards that people like to go through. And it's and I, quite frankly, I'm I'm very very tired of hearing it. These bad apples. Oh, look at these bad apples. They're so awful. Yeah, but don't say that by the cops. The whole the whole narrative is not going to shift, right? The whole narrative starts shifting. It doesn't become about what these guys are protesting and, and rioting about. Why is there such justified rage? And it is justified rage. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why it's justified rage. The narrative ends up becoming about, oh, violent, uh, protesters shouldn't be violent. Sure, they're going to get tear gassed and rubber bulleted, but they should, they sh they're, they're, look. These cops are doing a very difficult job, so it's okay for these cops to get scared of regular unarmed people that are completely defenseless and weigh one third of them. They that's that's scary, okay? Because it's because it's it's terrifying. And but protesters shouldn't get scared and act out in a, when they see tear gas and rubber bullets. That's ridiculous with that. You get out of here. You got to be patient and you just take those tear gases and rubber bullets to the chest. You got to just take it hard in the chest. You got to do it. That's that's what protesting is about, baby. Uh, I don't think you get it. The narrative ends up becoming about that, right? The media spins the narrative. They don't talk about the, the cops getting aggressive towards them. I mean, the videos I saw yesterday from my friend's live feed was... But it, like the cops were lobbing, they're setting dogs out, lobbing tear gas, rubber bullets. None of these protesters are armed, by the way. None of them are armed. They're still waving their signs and they're still singing their chants. But the narrative is, is oh, violent protesters. 
Nope, we can't listen to what you say now. Violent protesters. Well, you didn't listen to us before. Listen to us when we were marching peacefully. We weren't listening to us when we were talking about it. We've been talking about this shit for a few years. I know a bunch of journalists have been covering this sort of stuff. How long has this been going on? You weren't listening to us before. This is not about violent protest versus nonviolent protest. This is about a racist, thuggish, violent, unjust, unequal criminal justice system that disproportionately on a statistical level kills minorities versus uh, white people. They still kill a lot of white people. Cops still kill a lot of white people every year. Statistically speaking, there's less black people and brown people in this country. So out of that population, st the statistical numbers are larger for the minority community. It's about the largest wealth transfer in history to the already rich and wealthy in this country, leaving us in the, in the working middle class to get pittance, to get scrape, scraps, right? This is about communities of color and the middle class who haven't received testing over a fucking pandemic when we've been asking for Medicare for all. People are getting sick and they don't have a way to treat this thing. They don't have a way to get tested to find out whether they actually have the, the disease or not. Been talking about Medicare for all for so long. People are tired. They're getting sick and they're getting scared. This is about a system that abuses and uses people. I like pawns, regular average people. They get used like pawns to sacrifice to some fucking economy for the sake of some bullshit economy. And by making an argument that these targets and the banks and the fucking auto zones are more important than all of these arguments here that we have been peacefully talking about for years and years and years. And then to say that our anger is not justified when we kept saying there's a peaceful way to accomplish these goals. There's a peaceful, these will work. We have to try them. These will work. And you didn't fucking listen to it. What do you think is going to happen when people get tired, scared, and angry? You're looking at it. This is justified rage. That's what this is about. And look at how many of us believe in this thing, too. There were thousands of people in Pittsburgh yesterday. There were hundreds and thousands of people all across the country that marched, protested. Things got out of hand. I'll admit that. Look, I'm a pacifist. I, I'm, I, I can't do the rioting thing. It's not particularly in me. I was talking to a friend of mine about this yesterday. We all have to kind of find our purpose and find our role in all this stuff, right? I'm the guy that's going to come in with the information. That's what I got. I'm, I'm armed with information. Educate some folks about what's going on. Try to make sure I'm, I'm getting the accurate picture one way or the other. Um, I'm the guy that's going to bring some extra water bottles and some extra masks to the protest. Uh, I did not have a book bag yesterday. I should have had a book bag. Um, I'm that guy. I'm not the guy that's going to throw water bottles at a cop. I'm not the guy that's going to charge into the front lines. I'm not a warrior. That's not me. There's plenty of other people out there that are those warriors. There's plenty of other people that are going to be medics that know what to do when, when you get hit by tear gas that are going to help you out with that. I want people to be safe, and I'm going to do what I can. But I'm not going to get in their way. You know what I mean? I'm not going to set some shit on fire, but I will let you know that the wind's blowing east. I'm a pacifist, but that, that doesn't mean that I'm going to get in the way of justified anger. If you, if you think that targets are more important than human lives... You're on the wrong side of this revolution. You're on the wrong side of this revolution. Here's a question, I think, it, especially the people that, that are in, like, these moderates that are, um, you know, oh, 
the riots, come on. We got to keep it peaceful. Even when you're getting the rah, 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 rah. Here's a question you should ask yourself. Um, how many of these protesters, violent or otherwise, uh, have uh, killed cops or National Guardsmen? How many of them have injured cops and National Guardsmen to, to a point where they've had to go to a hospital and maybe, uh, um, I don't know, replaced a limb or uh, had to you know, be in extensive care? It, cops had to go in medical debt because of that. How many, of, how many protesters have, have done that to cops? I, I got none. I have zero. The answer is fucking nil. Zero. How many cops have killed innocent people in our society? I gotta, I've lost count. That's how many it is. We just saw how the pro cops were treating protesters and journalists. And they still have the audacity to sit there and say, well, peaceful, pro come on. They have guns. We don't. We're just doing what we can to defend ourselves. That's what the protesters and activists are doing now. That's what everybody in the middle class is doing now. We're just trying to defend ourselves because it's become very clear that the cops and these points of authority are not here to protect us. They are about to call the military police to Minnesota right now. They've already called the National Guard in a lot of these places. Pittsburgh is under curfew for the weekend. Chicago, Minneapolis, Seattle, that fucking uh, Atlanta. There's a bunch of places that are now on curfew. Which is like, that's not the response. Again, the point of these protests is the outrageous violent measures that police take for low-level crimes, misdemeanors at best, and the violence towards the middle class and people of color, who are also part of the middle class. And in order to show that you understand what we're protesting about, you come out with more violence towards it? How does that make any sense? How does, how does what's happening now to the protesters not justify the fact that we already live in an authoritarian state? And mind you, uh, I think this was 2014. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when Ferguson was going on, it was the same thing. Riot gear, tear gas, National Guard, all towards protesters that wanted uh, justice. That wanted to end the fucking killing of black people by police officers. The protest got a little too big. Numbers got a little too big. The, the fucking uh, Atlanta Police Department, I saw a tweet the other day where they were basically like, yeah, we don't want to go out because... The protesters outnumber us four to one, and we're scared. It's like, yeah, fucking good. Guess what that means? You should probably start listening. You should probably start listening. Now, if you are a moderate liberal and you're like, well, how do we help? How can we help? Here's a cool way that you can help. Here's a way that you can show solidarity. Here's an example of that. Maybe this can spark some inspiration in some people. The Minneapolis uh, bus drivers the city bus drivers have refused to transport any arrested protesters. That's fucking awesome. The Minneapolis bus drivers basically said that they're not going to do it. Um, and, uh, and here's the quote, make sure I get this. That's right. Uh, here's the quote, right. From Adam Birch, uh, who is a bus driver for the Metro Transit in Minneapolis and a member of the ATU Local 1005. Here's what he wrote on, uh, online. He said, as a transit worker and a union member, I refuse to transport my class and radical youth to jail. An injury to one is an injury to all. The police murdered George Floyd and the protest against it is completely justified and should continue until their demands are met. 
I will encourage and try to convince all of my coworkers and fellow union members to also refuse to assist MPD sending protesters to jail. That is fantastic. That is how you show solidarity to protesters right now. If these folks out there that are that are still uh, violent protests, bad. Uh, if these folks out there are still making these statements, and you wanted peaceful protesting, and you want peaceful protesting to work, why are you staying silent when there are striking workers? Why are you staying silent for that? When Amazon workers went on strike, why did you just be quiet about it? Why are you not championing a people's party against two corporate parties that virtually believe in the same things? And then when, when people advocate for that, you're shitting on them. Why are you doing that? That's a people way to do it. A new political party that specifically revolves around the interests of the people that would, that would support things like Minneapolis bus drivers not taking arrested protesters in, into custody? Why are you not supporting that? Where is the class solidarity from these people? There isn't. You'd like to make a nice Facebook post, but you won't go out there and support it. You won't address and support people talking about this stuff. Instead, you will lob insults and names and pretend you're better than them. And that's not helping anything. This anger is justified. There's a lot of people doing a lot of things. They're expressing their anger in, it, in, in various different ways. And you're saying, no, there's only one way to express anger. And it's the way that the, the moderate liberal says to express anger. That's not, that's not showing that you understand anything. This anger is justified. What's happening in these protests? Justified. I, I want to play a clip and talk about this clip because uh, here's the thing, like these moderates love to fucking quote Martin Luther King. They love it. They're, that's like their favorite thing to quote is, is oh boy, Martin Luther King, civil non-disobedience, right? We should do that. And uh, I'm all for it. You know, I'm a, like I said, I'm a pacifist, but I'm going to get out of the fucking way when I need to get out of the fucking way. And they, and they like to quote Martin Luther King, King Jr. So I want to play um, this interview from <clears throat> 1966, which was republished uh, about a year or two ago. So let's let's listen to this thing, and I'll, I'll kind of stop and talk in the middle. It's not very long. So this is the interview on 60 Minutes. I will did. never change uh, in my basic idea that nonviolence is the most potent weapon available to the Negro in his struggle for freedom and justice. I think for the Negro to turn to violence would be both impractical and immoral. And I do believe, again, I do believe, I do believe in that, right? But that it becomes impractical, but it only becomes impractical because you have a, you have a contingent of people that look at the violence and miss the point. They miss the they miss what the anger is really about. They miss the whole fucking point of it. Uh, so there's a second step to it, you know. the The only time that it becomes impractical is when people give in to uh, the propaganda levied by the media. There is an increasingly vocal minority who disagree totally with your tactics, Doctor King. Oh, this is there's where the no doubt comes about in. that. I would agree that uh, that is a a group in the Negro community advocating violence now. I happen to feel that this group represents a numerical minority. Surveys have revealed this. But the vast majority of Negroes still feel that the best way to deal with the dilemma that we face in this country is uh, through nonviolent resistance. And uh, I don't think this vocal group will be able 
uh, to make a real dent in the Negro community in terms of swaying 22 million Negroes to this particular point of view. And I contend that the cry of black power is at bottom a reaction to the reluctance of white power to make the kind of changes necessary to make justice a reality for the Negro. I think we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it that America has failed to hear? It is That's the second part that they really don't talk about. What is it that America has failed to hear? And we talked about that. The police violence against minority communities. The enriching of already rich people. The looting of the American people. The silence from the moderate liberal. Who, by the way, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., for as much as I've seen moderate liberals quote this, this thing, this quote, oh, he was still an advocate for civil disobedience. Well, that's an important distinction to make here. It's a language of the unheard. And the question is, what is America failing to hear? They don't like to say that second part of the quote. Because that second part of the quote justifies that anger. And Martin Luther King Jr. basically said that the, the uh, well, he said the white liberal moderate is the most dangerous person because they are more about order than they are about justice. And when it becomes more about order than justice, then you are willing to do what the authoritarians tell you to do. A riot is the language of the unheard. And what is America failing to hear? What have we failed to hear? We failed to hear all the strikers across this country for months on end talking about what we need. We failed to hear the calls of, of universal basic income and Medicare for all. We've hate, failed to hear the calls of the minority community saying, stop killing us with your police force. We need to transform this, this policing system. They missed the point. They missed the point. To say that the only way to drive change is nonviolence ignores the history of the Black Panthers, Malcolm X, a bunch of civil rights leaders who were, were counterbalanced to this. I believe in that. It, it's got to be balanced. My voice only goes so far. Your voices only go so far. Collectively, our voices are much louder. And they get even louder. Unfortunately, when some shit starts setting on fire. And then when that happens, people like me and all of the nonviolent people go, hello, we're still here. We would still like to talk to you if you were willing to talk. Because the alternative is you see a lot of anger go in this other direction. We also have anger. We are choosing to express it in a different way. If you would like to express, if you would like to accept that different way of expression, come on over. Let's have a discussion about how we can meet our demands. If you can't, well, we're stepping out of the way again. There's a whole lot of people that are willing to set a whole lot more precincts on fire. Again, I'm not going to light the building on fire, but I will tell you which way the wind is blowing. The Black Panthers fought for creating solidarity between all races, genders, and creeds, and they were attacked for it. Their peaceful resistance turned violent because it was escalated by the cops, by the FBI infiltrating them. That history is erased. A ride is the language of the unheard. What is America failing to hear? Let's look at a few of your comments. Uh, so, say, hey, Sarah, good to good to see you. Sarah was talking about the um, um, the, pro the cops escalating things and the provocateurs. Uh, they're passing laws to make it illegal to run down protesters with your cop car, cops included. Yeah, I hope those police officers go to prison for it. Like, I hope they get arrested for it. And I hope this guy that ran over some people in Pittsburgh um, get arrested for it. Um, 
a Black Panthers are here. My friend got an interview. Oh, cool. You should post the link to the interview. Uh, if if it's if it's a, up somewhere, you should post a link to it because that'd be that'd be awesome. Um, the Black Panthers. I'm, I'm basically going to do a history of Black Panthers for the June 5th virtual stand up comedy show that I'm donating 100% uh, of the ticket sales to the Minneapolis uh, Freedom Fund. Uh, and this is in regards to the Fred Hampton. Yeah, 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 there was a security guard that gave him the floor plan to Fred Hampton's apartment. They they got to the security guard, and he was working for the Chicago Police Department. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, Sarah, you started a watch party. That's very cool. Thank you for doing that. That's, that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, thank you, guys. Hey, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed the content that you saw in this video, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, and share this with some people uh, that you think would enjoy or benefit from uh, a video like this. Um, as some of you might know, if you have already subscribed, I am a uh, full-time touring performer that has been grounded uh, due to the pandemic situation that we are seeing all across the country. So I am going to be doing some virtual live stand-up comedy shows. I've done a few of these already. I'm doing them every single Friday in June at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Each show is going to be different. Each show talks about uh, different topics, different themes, different jokes. So uh, if you're interested in um, the topics that we discussed today, you'll probably be interested in a show like that. And because of everything that is going on um, in our society right now with the protests and um, and the the uh, the activism that we're seeing, um, uh, the Friday, June fifth show, one hundred percent of those ticket sales will be donated to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, uh, and then uh, going forward, fifty percent of every single uh, show's ticket sales will be donated to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Uh, for June. So uh, grab your tickets, help out a good cause, come check out a, a, a cool, interesting show that you probably won't catch on uh, uh, on any sort of mainstream comedy network. Um, the other thing is I'm also releasing a brand new stand-up comedy album called Politely Angry. I toured it all across the country uh, for about a year. It's recorded in uh, St. Louis, Biloxi, and Rochester, New York. You can uh, pre-order it on uh, Bandcamp right now, but it's also going to be released on June 1st and will be available on all the other uh, streaming and downloading platforms. You can go directly to my website, krishmohan.com, to grab your copy of the album, grab your tickets to come see the show, um, and while you're there, you can also make a donation to, to me if you would like to, if you would like to make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, that's also an option as well. Once again, you can go to krishmohan.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N. Thank you very much. And we'll